bear with me while I... Hopefully this is still working. Yep. Okay, got my phone clipped. Maybe that'll work. Make sure it's still recording. Yep. All right. Well, off we go. <clears throat> All right. YouTube, it's been a while. <clears throat> Taking old Pupso out for a walk here. It's been beautiful, beautiful days. Not so beautiful of a time, though. So, uh, I don't know if you can see my haggard ass camper up there, but uh, some really bad events happened to say the least. I'll get into that a little bit on this walk, maybe, but right now I'm just taking a walk. Got my, my oh, and my phone's been broken for over well over a month. Um, I finally just got a new phone and actually a smart watch too which i can't say i'm too into all that technology is bad enough they can hear everything and track everything all day every day all the time with just your cell phone now i got the watch but they gave it to me as part of some deal and i was like you know what verizon's been screwing me and my father for so long it's about time they give me something worthwhile but then i had to think about it. i'm like why do they want me to have this thing for free you know but, uh, anyways, thought I'd take a walk today. Did yesterday, too. It was nice out. I got my, my friend Hennessy with me. And I got couple of my girlfriends with me, Nina and Tina. Wow, the temperature from right where I just was walking to right here, the temperature just dropped at least 10 degrees. Jeez, I just got whipped with a pricker bush in the face. Ah, why? Ouch, 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 ouch. All right. Anyways, yeah, here's the uh, smartwatch. I don't know if people can see that. I will hope this is still recording. It is. Cool. Walking through water. Oh, fell in a hole. <sighs> All right, so I guess I'm going to tell everyone... Since I've been gone long, I haven't really been doing anything on YouTube. Uh, I uploaded the video that I got that new Sundown Audio sub. Haven't even put it in a box yet. <clears throat> um, so around Christmas time, went to my family thing. Came home, hung out with a buddy on Christmas Day for a little bit. And before I was even done hanging out with him, I realized my battery wasn't charging in the truck. So, came to the conclusion my alternator was fried. So what do I do? Order a MechMan 370. Install that, get it going. Voltage is great, truck's running great. Uh, was slacking on the fuel filter. Tr long story short, truck leaves us stranded about an hour away from our house, have to get towed. Um, so now, my truck is at a diesel place. Uh, really good shop. I like them. Of course, my truck's been there for over a month. Um, because when I first brought it there, they weren't able to work on it for quite some time before uh, 
for quite some time after I brought it there. So, and I knew that, but I had nowhere else to do it. I had to have it towed somewhere, so I had it towed there. So right now, my truck is currently getting head gasket, head stud, turbo downpipe, uh, Y bridge, injectors, lift pump, um, uh, EFI live tuning, which it already has, but it's going to get the five stages. Uh, the whole front end is being redone with kryptonite parts. Um, probably going to have to do some something with my gas tank because it leaks over three quarters of a tank. At any rate, the truck's getting like $20,000 worth of work done to it right now. Um, which I could definitely not afford, but I luckily have a grandmother who's fairly well off. Well, she is well off. And uh, she's helping me, thank God, because I really wouldn't be able to do it. And the fact is, it's way too much money. I, I could never get a brand new vehicle. Um, I could never make the payments on a vehicle. And uh, the truck only had 200000 It's a diesel, so... We decided to just go the full nine yards. I say we because it's my truck, but I have help from my father and my grandmother. So uh, in talking to them, we decided that we're just going to go all out and just totally bulletproof the thing and hook it up. So that's what's going on there. <clears throat> that's the positive stuff. Unfortunately, I've realized in my life that, see, I knew as soon as right before Christmas, I started doing really good, making good money. Um, kept really busy, always, always had money, always was able to do whatever I needed to do, you know, things were doing good. And I said to myself, and a few other people actually, you know, things are going way too good right now. Something bad's got to happen. I know it. And I, maybe I jinxed myself. I don't know. I don't really think I can do that. The laws of attraction stuff. I don't, oh, look at that. Big old bunch of moose shit right there. Definitely got moose in my yard. Um, anyways, oh, what was I saying? Ah, oh, shit, total brain fire. Oh, yeah, so it, it's just, that's the way, uh, the way things go for me. Like, when something really positive happens and it's, like, making me really happy, I know it just happens this way all the time that something, something bad's gonna happen. I kept it in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, well, whatever. Well, sure enough, the alternator fries and then I'm stuck without being able to work and uh because my truck is what how I make money so that was one bad thing that happened meanwhile all the time my uh my girlfriend is pregnant which I should have mentioned earlier in the video uh, what well I'm saying during this time she was pregnant I am now the proud father of a fourth daughter a little baby girl named Elena um, well, anyways, so there's that positive thing going on too, which, um, uh, for me, yes, it's positive, but it's also very stressful because like I said, it's my fourth daughter and it's four different babies, mothers. And, uh, I also have a son with another woman. So that's five kids with five different women. So that's, yeah, anyone that's married or has kids with anyone knows that five kids, with five different women. Yeah, that's a mess. But anyways, couldn't be happier with this new baby, you know? It's great. Um, I've got my daughter that lives about 20 minutes away who, she's only 20 minutes away and I still don't get to see her as much as I'd like to. Something always happens, screws things up. Um, so anyways, uh, we lost power. I wanna say about three weeks back, we lost electricity. And it was supposed to be out for like three days. It was ton crazy, crazy wind. Texas had the whole blackout thing going on. There was wind everywhere. I mean, it was ridiculous. Like completely, I, I, my dad thinks I'm insane, but I don't really give a fuck. Uh, it was completely unnatural. I mean, it was just, there was no weather. It was just ridiculous wind. So we lose power. Well, because I had this baby on the way, my girlfriend and I had been staying in a camper on my dad's property adjacent to the house um, but she was pregnant and we had our well we had our four kitties in the camper 
and we stayed there with them. Um, for the most part, I ended up sleeping in the house a lot, but my girl would stay out there with the kitties, and we'd always go check on the cats, and when she was pregnant, especially when she had the baby, we said we can't stay out here anymore. Turned into kitty land. It was kind of gross in there. Just couldn't keep up with the cleaning. It just wasn't going to work, so... <clears throat> During this time, the power's out. Uh, we have a newborn baby. So um, I said, you know, my girlfriend is like, oh, well, what are we going to do? You know, I need to, what if I need to bathe her or whatever? I'm like, yeah, you know, we're not going to have power for a few days. People survived for centuries, millions of years without power. But, you know, just to be safe, better safe than sorry. Not that we couldn't take care of things if we needed to, but you better go stay with your mom in mass till we get power on she leaves that night <clears throat> hold on I gotta catch my breath here for a sec <sighs> she leaves that night um, maybe I can take my phone off here unplug it here so she leaves that night and um, goes to her mom's house I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, that's fine. And uh, this is really hard for me to talk about, guys, I'm sorry. So she says, whatever you do when you get home, make sure you check on the kitties. And I was like, yeah, and I had already like been there. I knew they had food and water and stuff. I knew they could go one night if I didn't go over there. Um, also, it was so, it was like nine degrees or lower. It was so cold, there was no electricity. I did not want to open the door and let any more cold air in that camper than was already in there. I knew the kitties were all bundled up, so I left them alone. I didn't go check on them. Well. So, this might be hard. I might lose my fucking shit and start crying here. Hopefully not. Um, so, I don't know, 8.45 a.m. or something the next morning... I uh, wake up to my dad screaming, Lars, Lars, the camper's on fire, smoke's pouring out, it's in flames, old thing's in flames. And of course, immediately, I'm like, oh my God. I, I jump out, jump out, throw my freaking slippers on. I run out there and sure enough, the thing is in freaking flames. It's like really, really bad in flames. And uh, so we went from no power to electricity turned on and fire ignited within seconds. Um, I don't know how long it was burning. So it, it couldn't have been more than five or 10 minutes that the fire had taken over like that. And the only thing plugged in in there was the space heater. Um, it's not even a space heater, it's a room, like our actual room heater with the pretend flames, you know, the light that looks like a fire. And um, that was plugged in to a surge protector. And then there was another surge protector. No, that was plugged into one extension cord that was rated for a little more power than what the heater was. And that was the only thing plugged into that. Then there was a, a surge protector with a TV that wasn't even working plugged in and a DVD player. And of course there was no power. <sighs> So I don't know why the fire started necessarily. I can only speculate. My speculation is this, that the cats knocked their water bowl over. It knocked off the counter. And uh, I don't know why it was on the counter, but that's where it was. Otherwise it got stuff in it too much and the water was always nasty. So we wanted to keep the water clean. The cats knocked over the water and it spilt in the surge protector. Now, since there was no electricity, uh, the surge protector did not, it didn't, you know, break. It didn't, it didn't uh, shut off to protect because there was no electricity to short circuit it. It just stayed there with water. Then, as it was so cold, the water froze inside the surge protector. So when the power came back on, it couldn't, it couldn't pop the breaker to make the electricity stop flowing. It was just a solid block of ice and it all went up in flames. So anyways, my dad says, you know, fire, fire. 
and there was a five gallon bucket of water in the tub that we had filled to flush the toilet in case we needed to or whatever and he runs out there and he's dumping that um so i go out there first thing i could the only thing i could do is grab a couple like uh half gallon jugs of water actually not a half gallon it's like nothing it's all i had we had no hose nothing to use at the time and i ran over there and i'm trying to dump water and the flames are so bad you can't i mean it was so bad uh i'll i'll include some uh video footage of the camper probably in this video but it was so bad that you couldn't even get in there you couldn't breathe anything and all i'm thinking about is the cats the cats the cats and uh finally i i was like and this is all happening within seconds you know it's very very fast a lot much quicker than i'm telling the story and i uh i run back in the house i realize i can't go in and save the cats if i don't have you know any like thing to cover up with or whatever so i run inside i grab a, a hood sweatshirt i cover myself i wrap my face with a bandana and and i uh run over there and try to go in to save the kitties it's not even possible the flames are so bad um and then I run to the basement where we have a family slash friend mem member living down there. And I told him what's happening. I'm losing it. I'm crying. I'm hysterical. Um, I said, I think the cats are dead. I think the cats are going to die. And uh, he's like, what do you need? I was like, I need a hose. So we connected a hose in the basement and threw it out a basement window. And I threw it to my dad. And he was able to start spraying it. At that point, I was walking around the camper trying to find any sign of kitties anywhere when he got the flames down a little bit enough so that I could actually maybe break a window or something because you couldn't open the door because the flames just roared it was so bad so finally I I started I smashed a couple windows the fire's still going I managed to go in there flames and all that stuff and I went right to the spot where I thought I'd find my baby kitty my favorite kitty I mean, I love them all, but the kitty that you see me make videos of, the one that's always on my shoulder, the white and striped one, the little sweetheart kitty, she just, yeah, um, yeah, um, anyways, so, uh, I go right to, right to where I assumed she would be, which was, there's a drawer by the, the sink in the camper that was always open a crack, and she'd climb in the drawer and go behind it, and that was her spot. And I reached in there, and uh, I felt the little warm, fluffy body. And I said, yo, I thought I was so happy. I thought I saved you. You know, I grabbed her, and I'm, like, running, running outside. And I, I, I'm I, hugging her, and I'm kissing her, and I'm patting her and saying, oh, my God, baby, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. You're okay. And I uh, put her down on the hood of the, of the car, my dad's ranger he got. And uh, I was thinking, I just thought she was passed out, you know. I thought she was passed out, and I was going to give her kitty CPR. Um, I was going to, you know, I've seen it before. I was going to breathe in her little nose and push on her little body and chest and try to make her, you know. And I uh, I looked down, and her eyes were glazed over, her tongue's hanging out of her mouth. There was blood trickling from her nose. And she had lost her bodily functions, um, so she was obviously dead. And at that point, I just lost it even more. And I ran back to the camper. I'm thinking, please, let me find another kitty. And the first thing that happens, I open the door and I realize my youngest cat, Gizmo, who's only a year old about exactly, he was dead right in front of the door to the camper, completely drenched and covered in soot. And uh, which where he was, there's no way he didn't get stepped on while trying to save the other cats and going in and out. Not only that... Um, when my dad first, see, this is, I hate to say it, but the guy, he's just not all there anymore in his old age. He opened the camp, when he first saw the fire, he opened the camper door. And he just saw fire and slammed it shut immediately. But then he tells me he hears, he heard a rustling around in there. So, my speculation is he opened it, he caught it soon enough, almost. Where he could have at least saved a couple kitties. But he didn't think, oh no, kitties... He thought immediately the house is going to burn down, which is very true. The, the camper is only about 15 feet away from our home. So he's not wrong for thinking that, and I understand. It was a panic situation, but uh, he probably could have left the door open for 
five or 10 seconds longer and let the kitties try to run out instead of slamming it shut immediately. I'm pretty sure he slammed the door shut and Gizmo was on his last breath and tried to make it to the door and he died right there. And then my dad found my other kitty, Skittles, the gray one, who was dead a few feet away from him, who also looked like she was probably running to the door. And then the next day, my dad found Annabelle, who was the chubbier kitty, who was the oldest, almost seven or eight years old. Um, I can't believe I told this story without losing my mind. And it's also a lot, man, I, I had to tell it the simplified version because I really would just cry and lose it. Um, so that was a few weeks ago. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not complete. I am not whole. I, I'm trying to be happy about the baby. I'm trying to be happy about my truck's gonna be awesome. And I just can't. It's, you know, I've lost many pets. I've lost cats. I've lost dogs. Um, nothing like this. I've, this is by far one of the worst things that's ever happened to me. Um. And to top it off, uh, I don't really want to add the conspiracy theory twist to it, but since that happened, I can't help but notice that everything is being really weird. Uh, gang stalking in full effect, let's just say that. Um, so yeah, your boy, Base and Truth in the Sticks, also known as Lars, is uh, not having a really good time. You know, and I was saying, it's funny, you can have everything you want in the world. I have everything I want. I, I have any any clothes I need. I have any food I need. I have anything I need. I have it. I'm okay. You know, within reason, of course, but it doesn't bring happiness. There's nothing happy about it if you're not whole, if you don't feel complete. There's missing, something's missing. My, uh... My kitties being gone like that and, and knowing that it had, I mean, we're talking about everything was fine to, I lost four beloved pets and part of my home and lots of sentimental value belongings within a half hour. Um, of course, fire department didn't come or anything. We didn't have a chance to call them because if we took the time to deal with them, then it, our house probably would have burnt down. And we managed to put the fire out ourselves, finally. Um, but yeah, it's really, really, really not been a good time for me. I got my puppy out here with me. Um, there was other things I wanted to talk about, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm going to go ahead and clip this back on my shirt.